Well, hey, everybody. <laughs> come in, come in. Welcome. Come in, come in. How is everyone this evening, this Sunday evening at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time? Please do come in. How is everyone? Hello, Leticia Martinez. Welcome. Thank you for joining me this evening. Debbie Kidd, hey love, how are you? And JG, welcome as always. <laughs> hey Will, I got the bell ready for you. I'm super excited. <laughs> hey Miss Phenomenal Creations, welcome back. It's been a minute or two. Glad to have you in here. Miss Betty L, hello to you as well. Tracy Jones, hi Jalil, how are you? <laughs> Aracel, welcome. Hey, Araceli, sorry, I haven't seen your name before. Welcome. Thank you for joining us live this evening. Sheila Cuffy. Hey, Sheila Cuffy. How's that baby doing? <laughs> How's hubby, by the way? Please tell him I said hello. And Doris. Hello, Miss Bickham. Hi. Hope you're feeling better. <laughs> so crafty. Jackie Howard. Hello. You're welcome, Miss Phenomenal Creations, as always. How is everyone this evening? Hope everyone is doing well this evening. Um, Tracy, oh, you asking, Debbie Kidd wants to talk to Miss Tracy Jones, so make sure you answer that. <laughs> Erica Betts, hi, how are you? Debbie D, hi, Debbie D. <laughs> Sherminia, Shermina, hello, Miss B, last Sunday, had to watch the replay, that's fine. We appreciate you watching the replay. We definitely always enjoy those who watch us regularly. You guys are the backbone to this channel, it's not me. It's all about you. So thank you for watching the replay, definitely. Uh, Charlotte, hi from Alabama. How are you this evening? Welcome. Thank you for joining us. JG is thanking Will. And I'm just going through the chat. So if I'm reading what you say, then don't pay me any attention. <laughs> Nancy Faust says hello to everyone from Iowa. Well, welcome to you as well, Miss Faust, as always. Renee Boyd, hello. Wanda Balkett, hello. Welcome. Thank you for joining us live this evening. Haven't seen your name before either. So we appreciate you being here. Tracy Spencer says greetings. Greetings to you as well, my love. Suzanne, go Grant, go. Hello from where it's probably warmer than here, Florida. Welcome. <laughs> Barbara Grothier, hello to you as well. Elaine Dickerson, hi. How are you this evening? Thank you for joining me. Carol Coleman, as always, hello, welcome. Thank you for being in here with us this evening. Um, <laughs> tell Natasha I said hi, Sheila. Hey, Natasha. <laughs> it was good meeting you. <laughs> Definitely hope to see you. Let's see, are you coming to Greenville, Sheila? I would like to know that because I put the husband on alert and hopefully we will definitely be there uh, the 21st and the 22nd in Greenville, South Carolina for the uh, EEM show, the Everything Embroidery Market. So super excited about that. That is this month, the 21st and the 22nd of February in Greenville, South Carolina. So I do intend to be there, hopefully both days. <laughs> That's the plan anyways. Barbara Nance, good evening to you as well. Thank you for being here as always. Love having you here. Let's see. Teresa Spencer says, greetings from Las Vegas. How are you? How are you? <laughs> Shonda Coleman. Well, hello to you from Arkansas. Don't recall you being in here either. So welcome. Thank you for joining us. KS Embroidery, good evening to you too. JG just gave me a thumbs up. Well, thank you. And if you are in here please be sure to hit the like button on this video if you enjoy our show today. It's super special. I'm really excited about it. Hopefully I can get everything to go as planned without any lag or anything like that. Um, so I'm really excited about the show tonight. We are actually going to do some live embroidery this evening. Um, and it's something that I have, well, I've done it before, but I haven't done it this way. So I'm excited and hopefully everything <laughs> hopefully everything will go well y'all know how it goes whenever i'm trying to do something and it wants to act up and embarrass me so we'll see we'll see how it goes ron kelly hi how are you thank you for being here this evening doris reyes from tennessee welcome thank you for joining us charmita says your lives are the best thing since a slice of bread <laughs> 
Thank you, because I love bread. So, you know, that's a compliment over here, girl. <laughs> Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. We're going to have some fun tonight. I hope so, anyway. Don't have a meltdown on camera because something ain't active. <laughs> we definitely going to try and make sure everything goes well. Fresh Roses Design says hi to everyone. Hello to you as well. Thank you for being here. Sheila Cuffey says we thought about it, but not this time. Oh, man, that makes me sad. <laughs> so I'll have to make a plan to come to your neck of the woods then and come see you guys. So we'll definitely work on that. Which, by the way, those who are regular, please be on the lookout for a message from me. I'll say starting in March, okay? So we're putting our schedule, travel schedules together, and I need to know uh, of some good hotel locations in your areas. So I would much rather get referrals from you guys about what's good. If possible, if you don't have recommendations, that's cool. Just let me know because I know like for myself, I can tell you where not to stay, <laughs> but sometimes it's difficult to tell you what's a good place to stay, especially based on budget. So I'm super excited about what we have coming up with that, but we'll get to that at a later date. <laughs> um, JG says, where in South Carolina, the EEM show will be in Greenville, South Carolina on the 21st and the 22nd so super super excited about that doris reyes says hello back valerie says hello <laughs> sheila cuffey says eve one questions what needle did you use when you are embroidering on faux fur i am using the 9014 the 90 slash 14 top stitch that is now my all around everything I choose to do embroidery needle with the exception of like super lightweight, like maybe a um, handkerchief or something. Then I would drop down to possibly the 7511 again and use it with that and the thinner thread, the like 60 weight embroidery thread with that. But my regular 40 weight embroidery thread loves the 9014 top stitch needle. So that is my new go-to needle for just about everything. So that is what I use with the faux fur. I'm excited. <laughs> I do have the 4x4 video recorded, excuse me, for the, um, I don't see what I did with him, for the Yeti zipper pouch. I did one in the 4x4. And I think you guys will probably appreciate that video a lot because I had a really hard time putting that one together and there were some mistakes and I'm definitely keeping that in the video and want to show you what to look out for in using your 4x4 machine and doing a project of that magnitude all right it was able to be done but there was some difficulties and I wanted to make sure to get that out so that one is recorded I also have that other special where I went out and did an interview recorded still haven't edited that video you guys oh my gosh it's just been a madhouse around here. He got a lot of rush um, orders here recently that I've been working on. So trying to fit everything in isn't quite as easy as I would hope it to be. You're welcome, JG. Arthur Lewis says, hi, Eve, and everyone from Port Allen, Louisiana is always welcome to you as well. Uh, Sheila Chan says, good evening, everyone. Good evening to you as well as well. <laughs> Um, let me see. Valerie Hale said, wanted to come, but our newspaper is having an event. That's understandable. That's understandable. So hopefully, um, you'll get to make the next one. And hopefully there will be another one sometime really soon. Charlotte Villa says, do you plan to come to Alabama anytime at all? Uh, Alabama is definitely on the radar. I have quite a few viewers from Alabama. So yes, we are. And I have a really good friend that lives um right near the alabama florida line so if you're close to that yes even if not further into alabama yes we are looking at visiting there as well but all of it this is the first time um putting all of this together excuse me and i haven't um decided on how it's gonna work you know because there are travel expenses involved and trying to figure out exactly what to do whether it be uh, because I, I don't want to just say, hey, come and see me, and we just pop up, and I'm just traveling the country. I wanted it to be um, 
not a retreat, but kind of like a retreat, like a little class of some sort where we actually do some embroidery together. I think that would be a lot of fun. So that's what my plan is, but we'll see how to fine tune everything. I am speaking with or consulting with someone uh, who already travels and does something similar to this uh, and getting some feedback and making sure that everything comes together like it's supposed to because I want you guys to get more value out of it than I do. You know, it, again, just like this channel, it's for you. So the travel will be for you guys as well. So that's what we're looking forward to getting done. You are on the Georgia-Alabama line. Well, that's too not too far actually from the Florida Georgia line. Not really. So yeah, we could definitely work that. And uh, Erica Bet says, come to Michigan. I have to come to Michigan. <laughs> I have a family in Detroit, so I don't have a choice. <laughs> um, let's see. Let's see. Kath Catherine says, hi, everyone from New York City. Well, welcome, Miss Catherine. I hope you guys are keeping warm up that way. I know you're probably just as cold as we are down here. Paula K says, hello. Hello to you as well sheila cuffy um says thanks even on your six needle that probably is not a message for me <laughs> karen caldwell hello my dear welcome hey miss eve just listening in and getting my studio back set up and running again man is packing and moving hard <laughs> i bet and you guys i'm glad everything seems to be filling in like it's supposed to moving is never easy especially when you're moving an embroidery studio right so I'm glad you guys are getting settled in. Hope I don't have to move anytime soon. Diane Henderson says, good evening, everyone. Hope all is well. Thank you for that and hope everything is well with you too. So I'm going to, um, <laughs> Ms. Beckham, I know. <laughs> I know better anyway. I know not to even ask. Jennifer H. says, hello to everybody. Charlotte Villa says, from Birmingham, Alabama area. Sweet. D Diane Day says, hi from Texas. Welcome to you as well. Um, Dar Smith, you know what? That's right. I haven't heard from Dar Smith. I'm going to have to reach out to her. I do have her information. Hmm. I'm glad you said that. Thank you. Oh, man, that just hit me like a ton of bricks now that I think about it. I have been missing her. Um, I want to show you guys what we'll be doing tonight. Okay, so is this the right one? Um, what we will be doing tonight is patches okay so i've been working on letterman jackets for a uh, step team of sorts and this is one of the jackets that i've done now i will tell you that in doing this on this jacket this was my very first time doing this sort of patch even though technically it's not a patch because I did the embroidery directly on the jacket. But tonight, we're going to do the exact same process, pretty much, that I did here. We're going to do on the embroidery machine and make a patch out of it, okay? So, um, this is... Now, usually, when you see a patch like this, especially Letterman or Greek jackets, the patches are made out of Chanel, okay? And Chanel is the really loopy fabric, um, surface on the patch however the Chanel is a specialty type of embroidery um, that goes on the patch and you have to have a special machine for that that's not something that we can replicate that I know of on the embroidery machine okay so there is a special machine that does Chanel uh, type embroidery on the surface of the fabric and you can create a patch out of it well I don't have that machine <laughs> And these guys that I'm doing this for, they did not have the budget to actually get Chanel lettering, you know. So we decided to come up with an alternative. And I must say it turned out absolutely gorgeous, in my humble opinion, of course. But it could have been so much worse for it being my absolute first time. So when I showed this in the hoop group and also on Facebook in our embroidery group, the Embroidery Boss, the group that I'm a part of. Um, people actually liked it and they wanted to see the process and how it went down. Well, the cool thing is in doing this is actually applique, okay? So the cool thing is we're gonna be doing not only the patch 
and learning how to do this, but you're also basically doing applique. So for those who are new to embroidery and want to know how to do applique, you're going to learn that. Those who are new to embroidery and want to learn how to make a patch, to a certain extent, you're going to learn that tonight as well. Now, again, I mentioned I did this directly on the jacket. We won't be doing this on the jacket tonight because, um, number one, I didn't have time to get everything set up to uh, film over by the big machine and get the other jacket marked for the embroidery. But um, I felt like it would go over better if we were able to do this on the 4x4 machine so that those who don't have a six needle machine can see that you can do the exact same thing on a 4x4 machine, all right? So the only difference is we won't be using the actual surface of the jacket. We'll use some fabric to substitute for it. Um, well, actually, we're just going to use stabilizer because I'm going to turn it into a patch, but the same process applies. The only thing I would suggest is, and you can't see it, on here because I've cleaned it off but there's a line that I marked straight down to show me the center and to keep my uh, embroidery straight as I'm putting it on the uh, surface of this jacket right and on the multi needle machine there's a laser all right that helps me keep everything straight but on the uh, single needle machine the 4x4 I don't have a laser all right so I had to use the hoop guide to line, I would have to use the hoop guide to line everything up and to make sure everything is straight. Okay, so this is what we will be doing this evening. So as soon as we get the opportunity to switch over to the 4x4 machine, we'll go ahead and do that. Meanwhile, I'll go ahead and answer a couple of other questions. And also, and yes, um, Jaleel, that is embroidery on top of that patch. That is absolutely correct. And we also definitely have a bell to ring, I know for sure, tonight. So if anyone else in here is watching us this evening and they got a new baby, okay? So one of the features of this channel is if you get a new piece of equipment for your embroidery studio or your crafting studio, whether it be a new um, cutting machine, a new embroidery machine, a new sewing machine, um, uh, not serger machine, heat press, you know, something along those lines to help you make money and improve your studio, we ring the bell for your new babies. And usually I ask you what it is exactly, um, if it's embroidery especially, we'd love to know the make and model or the model number of what you're getting, what it is, like uh, Brother PR655, Six Needle, you know, something along those, those lines so that we can definitely celebrate more with you. Um, and we ring the bell to give congratulations to you. So we'll get to that as soon as we catch up in the chat. So Lillian Burton says hello from Memphis, Tennessee the, at the Tennessee, Mississippi line. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you for joining us this evening. Sincere Jam Rock says hi from Oklahoma. Hello. Welcome. Thank you for joining us in our channel this evening. Uh, Sheila Chan says, you're in Mississippi two hours from Birmingham, Alabama. So Birmingham does seem to be a hot spot to go to. So I'm really excited about getting in touch with folks about doing that. Sheila Cuffey says, you said use the 9014 needle. I was asking, do you use that on your six needle as well? Yes, ma'am, I do. I use it on my single needle machine as well as the six needle machine. All six of those uh, needles are their 9014 top stitch for sure. Um, again, the only other change would be on something super lightweight or if I need a ballpoint needle, I will switch to a ballpoint needle over there for jersey knit stretchy materials, then I'll switch. Um, but I go right back <laughs> to my top stitch needle because it glides through everything perfectly. So yes, ma'am, I do use that on the six needle. Fin fishing? Oh, fun cool thanks for teaching this guy many tricks on embroidery hello world well hello to you too as well i like fishing for fun <laughs> from seattle washington i have family there as well and i saw a video of the snow up that way so hopefully hopefully you're keeping warm too Shermina stewart says do you have a fund account where we can support your expenses and donate from time to time just a thought yes ma'am i do actually there is a link in the description below for direct PayPal. If you would like to, I do have a PayPal link 
Um, also, I have an Amazon affiliate account, which is down below. If you ever click that, if you're going to purchase anything on Amazon, that also helps support the channel for sure. <laughs> Definitely. So there's a couple of different ways you can do that. And any donations are greatly, greatly appreciated. Also here on YouTube, you can do a super chat as well. If you would like to, some people choose not to, and that's okay as well. So yes, ma'am, I do definitely have a means of support at this time. And I do definitely want to thank anyone who is willing to donate to our channel because we always turn around and put that right back <laughs> into the channel because it's tons when you get into embroidery there's a lot of expenditures it really is um and we're also upgrading our computer equipment so we can be fancy and switch cameras and all that cool stuff without any <laughs> any lags or disturbances so that's going to be in the plans as well but thank you for asking very very much Sheila Chan says, I am also two hours from Memphis. Sweet. Okay. I'll have to keep that in mind when I'm back in the Tennessee area, which hopefully will be soon. Um, let us see. DR Dr. Threads. Hello from Westchester, Illinois. Divine Creations Custom Embroidery Pastor Brown. Well, welcome, Dr. Threads. How are you? We appreciate you being here as always. <laughs> And um, that reminds me of something. I have a special shout out that I need to give tonight um, that I received a really encouraging phone call Thursday. And it was, it's a, it was just, y'all don't understand how sometimes the emails uh, that I receive, I received a letter in the mail the other day, which was, totally unexpected and very much appreciated and actually that day was a horrible horrible day so you know i i just that letter really came in at a really good time and i appreciated that one but edward brown physical therapist <laughs> um, out of illinois i definitely want to say thank you and i appreciate you putting up with your wife watching my videos <laughs> because it's funny i'll meet people and they're like well my significant other or my daughter or like the one lady i met and she was like my mom watches you all the time and it's at three in the morning when i'm trying to sleep and i'm like oh no i'm sorry <laughs> i don't mean to cause any issues in the house and she was like wait till i tell my mom and she went and got her mom and it was really cool to meet her so that was awesome so you guys just definitely know that um we definitely want to be uh, show our appreciation anytime you show support to us it doesn't have to be financial sometimes an encouraging word is enough because being in this channel, that's why we continue to make videos and i always love having everyone here especially the regulars and one day we'll come up with something super awesome for the regulars to participate in and have a good time uh for those long timers in here so we'll thank you so much for your five dollar super chat to uh let everyone know don't forget to like the stream we definitely want to make sure to please hit that thumbs up if you if you're on your mobile device and you don't see where to leave a thumbs up if you'll hit the button it says live chat it will close out the chat temporarily it won't take it away and you can hit the like button and then hit the live chat again and it'll come back and you'll be able to continue with the chat as you have been doing before so linda smith asks a common question how did you go about getting the name of your business well, um, it's a somewhat long story, but I'm going to go with the short version and I need to have the actual picture nearby for every time that question comes up. But it is a name that I came up with uh, during near 20 years ago, almost 20 years. Actually, it's um, 19 and a half years ago. Um, I came up with that business name because of a picture of my daughter. All right. Um, and I said back then that if I ever was uh, able to come up with a business where that name would fit, I was going to name the business that. Well, when I initially started with embroidery, I was making baby outfits, baby bibs, baby blankets and whatnot. So it fit the baby's booty. Um, and because I had my uh, mascot, Sir McQuackens, who is a pirate duck. <laughs> my pirate rubber ducky i figure pirates have booty 
why not let it be the baby's booty so that's how i came up with that name and if i can come up with or pull up the picture really quick i'll show it um but it's way down in my instagram and i have to scroll quite a bit to get to it unfortunately i got to it really quick this is the picture of my um and why is my chat not showing up that's crazy i'm gonna have to fix that but this is the picture of my now 19 year old looking out of the window with those cute little chocolate legs y'all look at them little legs oh i could just eat her alive she was just the cutest little baby on the planet i'm trying to tell y'all my baby was adorbs <laughs> she really was and it's funny because people tell me all the time uh told me all the time that she looked like a little baby doll when she was born and for a good while after but at any rate that's how i came up with the name the baby's booty <laughs> so long story but that's pretty much where that came from um teresa spencer says you have a new cricket maker well let's ring the bell for you and your cricket maker <laughs> congratulations to you we definitely appreciate that thank you for uh letting us know that you do have an adorable cricket maker those are a lot of fun so hopefully you are going to get quite a bit of use out of that baby because cricket makers are awesome especially with vinyl all right that blade is gonna be phenomenal phenomenal and uh wow carol coleman thank you i appreciate the super chat thank you very much for supporting our channel we definitely appreciate that oh my gosh i can't say that enough y'all thank you very much miss carol coleman for your generosity and the support of our baby's booty channel <laughs> looking forward to getting more content out to you guys uh i have quite a large video extensive list that i need to be working on oh speaking of which if you have any requests for videos of something that you want to see please drop it in the comments or shoot me an email at thebabiesbooty at gmail.com um i would definitely love to get your suggestions of something to add to the list of videos and if it's something that i think really needs to be seen right away i'll go ahead and bump it up and do the video um but meanwhile we'll definitely add it to the list debbie kid just gotta use brother pr 600 to take two events well congratulations on that you've been looking for a while <laughs> Woo! So congratulations on your pr 600 ma'am because i know you're going to get a lot of good use out of that you do a lot of events so that's going to be amazing and will got a new heat press and he called it hot head how cute is that <laughs> go will go will yay <laughs> Congratulations, Will! Will got him a heat press, so he's going to be doing vinyl, and we're going to be doing a little bit of bling. I'm super excited for Will on that. So we've talked at length about some of the things that he's going to be doing, so I'm really excited for Will. Linda Smith says she got a brother 625. Well, awesome, ma'am. Congratulations! Woo! <laughs> Congratulations on your 625 that is going to be a lot of fun and please you guys those of you in the hoop group please be sure to share your pictures of your projects in the hoop group we really want to see them because it's quite encouraging to those of us who may be like you know what? i don't feel like doing anything today but then when we see your projects you're like you know what? let me get in there and do some work so please be sure to post your projects in the hoop group okay and if you want to know how to sign up for the hoop group is right here below where you can go to thebabiesbooty.com and click on join hoop group for those who are in embroidery or is interested in embroidery and want to ask questions or find some direction on where to say purchase thread or whatever the case may be you can definitely join the who group there so thank you very very much for that deborah says snow again in illinois hi everyone will you have your snow ma'am <laughs> because one thing's for certain we have the cold but we don't have the snow so i don't want the snow even though now we're getting rain and i'm just not feeling the rain either but we've had such warm weather and it's been beautiful i guess i shouldn't really complain sheila newhouse says hello from west virginia hello to you as well 
And we want to say thank you to Teresa Spencer for your $10 super chat. And she says, may the Lord keep you educating us all. Amen, ma'am. Amen. I hope he does. Because <laughs> this is what I love to do. I love to teach. And I'm hoping that this will continue for a long time. Okay, so I've been getting a lot of confirmation later, uh, lately about it too. So I'm really excited about that. So thank you very much for your super chat and the support of our channel. Well, your channel actually. <laughs> it's not for me. So thank you again. Diane Day says she just made the last payment. Last payment, Lord. <laughs> On her brother NQ 1400E embroidery and her NQ 1300 PRW sewing machine. They are now mine instead of the bank. Girlfriend, we finna ring the bell. <laughs> Woo! Thank goodness for them last payments, ma'am. <laughs> Congratulations on your two babies that are now officially yours. Girl, I know that feeling. <laughs> So congratulations, definitely. Vicki Hamilton says hello from Snowy, Chicago. Debbie D got us all. Oh, see, I'm jealous now, Debbie D. I'm looking for a sublimation printer too. So congratulations. Ooh, congratulations on that sublimation printer, girl. You finna make some money. You hear me? Because sublimation is all the rage right now. So congratulations for sure on that. Linda Smith says she is from Dayton, Tennessee. So I'm going to have to look up where that is and hopefully we'll be near your neck of the woods soon as well. And again, for those who are in the Hoop group, if I do travel to anywhere, I will be letting you guys know way ahead of time. That's if I do personal travel. Uh, but once that schedule comes out of our listed stops of where we will be going to in the States, um, then you will know way ahead of time where I'm going with that. But if I am traveling somewhere for personal reasons, I will be posting that as well. So that if need be, we can meet up and say hi. <laughs> Dorothy Gaston says hello to everyone. Hello to you. Chris Moyes says hello from frozen Michigan. I bet it is. Hello to you as well. Sending warm wishes your way. Barbara Raymond says good evening everyone from New Orleans. Good evening. <laughs> Ethel Smith says good evening Good evening to you as well Janice Haynes says good evening from North Little Rock, Arkansas Katie from Hotep says good evening everyone Hello to you Haven't seen your name Welcome, welcome Um, afro Columbia says oh my goodness she did And your little baby Jojo <laughs> Well I'm glad that worked out I'm not sure what, what I missed I'd probably overlook whatever you said Sylvia Young says, hi, hello, how are you, how are, how are you, Lupe Riaz is gone, okay, sorry, Linda Smith says, you love your scanning cut, I know that's right, I love it too, I just want to get more use out of it than the one, two times that I've used it, man, ugh, that's so frustrating, Belly, Betty LM says, hello, thumbs up to you as well, Lupe Ruiz, okay, I'm new to your channel, love it, thank you, Thank you very much. And I'm going to breeze through these so that we can go ahead and switch over to the embroidery machine. Carol Coleman says you are like going to the movies and I didn't have to. <laughs> you didn't have to move. That's funny. You know what? I don't even like going to the movies, you guys. But I broke down and went to see Lego Movie twice this weekend. Once with the kids and then I felt bad and went with my husband when he got back in town on Saturday. So I had a good time at the movies. I do like. Uh, I did like the Lego movie. Valerie Hale says, I have a new Cricut heat press. Love it better than your large heat press. What? But we're going to ring the bell for your heat press now. Congratulations on your Cricut heat press. Woo! <laughs> I hear tell it is a lot more convenient. All right. So I am happy for you for that. But I love my large heat press. So we'll have to see. One of these days I may spring and get one. Just to give it a shot and see how it works. But for the time being, I do love my clamshell heat press. Uh, Dorothy Gaston says, cutting hand sanitizer on the Cricut machine. Nice. I have been doing that. I need to um, finish up an order of hand sanitizer. I don't even see my cut, the pieces that I've cut out there somewhere. 
Um, but I have cut some out that I need to go ahead and put together. I've just been lazy and haven't done it. Leah, hey love, hi even everyone. Hello to you too as well. Uh-oh, Miss Bickham, I'm sorry. I'm glad you're back. Welcome back. Um, I don't think you missed much other than the bell ringing. <laughs> so welcome back. Uh, Dorothy Gaston says, we had an ice storm this morning here in St. Louis. Wow. I hope you guys were able, you and your family was able to stay safe. Ice storms are nothing to play with. We actually get those here more than we do snow. So please be careful. Tracy Jones says, speaking of last payment, I just made the last payment on my Will Come Hatch software. Girlfriend, when I tell you when I made my last payment, I was over here just dancing in the studio because that was a good feeling that was a lot of payments <laughs> because that software ain't cheap in the least little bit and actually i made the last payment on my rhinestone software so i definitely understand where you're coming from with that so we're gonna ring the bell for the, for you and me <laughs> congratulations on will come hatch that's actually a big accomplishment ma'am so congratulations Woo! on your digitizing adventures. <laughs> Don't forget to sign up for some of those classes with John Deere. They are quite worth it. Debbie Kidd says, I'm working on furry fleece jackets that another embroidery messed up. Woo, you a good one. I don't like fixing other folks' mistakes, so you good. I will post pictures on the hoop group on what not to do with fleece jackets. Please do so. Thank you very much for that linda smith says 30 miles from chattanooga okay got you got you looking excited uh i'm looking forward rather to heading back to tennessee tennessee was gorgeous i had a good time in tennessee dr threads i have a little new baby brother se 600 just for a four by four four <laughs> four by four work only congratulations Woo! on your new four by four <laughs> Congratulations on your new baby, ma'am. So I know those are uh, limited. You know, 4x4 four four can be so limited, but I'm trying to tell people they're not that bad. They really aren't. Um, so hopefully you will get a lot of good use out of it. Uh, Lupe says, what will you recommend between So What Pro and In Brilliance Essentials? I'm about to purchase one, but need advice. Um, I am going to say personally that so what pro is the better choice but i'm saying that because uh so what pro has been phenomenal in making in in being affordable and in doing everything i've needed software to do okay and in brilliance essentials when i downloaded that it didn't uh it didn't mesh well with me like it didn't it wasn't easy as easy as so what pro was to use and then they had so many different levels to purchase and you had to get this and get that to go with it and all that jazz i was like you know what? i just it was too much it was too much for me all right now what i would suggest to you is check your budget if you can afford and brilliance well actually let me back up before you check your budget both so what pro and in brilliance have um limited trials okay so 30 days you can try both software programs all right so give them both a shot 30 days with one 30 days with the other and see how you like it that should actually be your first decision maker and then your second decision maker should be your budget so if you use embrace essentials and you're like okay well it's all right and you use so what pro and you're like you know what this is okay too well, then look at your budget. Which one is easier to afford? That should be the nail in the coffin, all right? And um, so at Pro, I am fully aware, is $65 uh, for the full program. I do sell that on my website if you would like to purchase from me. If not, you can purchase from snscomputing.com. Doesn't matter the program so good. I don't care where you buy it from, all right? So it is available in Brilliance. I'm pretty sure it's more than that. I know it's more than that. So it's just entirely up to you how you want to uh, go with that. Um, and welcome back, Shamina. And A. Warner says, can you teach me how to use your brother for 440 embroidery machine? Well, 
I have several videos on YouTube that show how to use the 4x4 embroidery machine. So please check this channel out um, and scroll through and you will be sure to find many videos on how to use your 4x4 machine. So while you guys um, hang tight real, really quickly, what I'm going to do is go ahead and get the design switched over to my uh, 4x4 machine so that we can get this party started. And what we're going to do is stitch out. I'm not going to put the embroidery on top of the patch only because that part really isn't difficult. It's just regular embroidery. And that's actually more something um, that I would need to do a video on because it shows how to use Sew It Pro to achieve that look. That's better suited for that. But as far as um, just the simple doing embroidery to make the patch, we're not going to go into that. And Mary Binkley, good evening to you. First time here, welcome. We appreciate you being here. Courtney Skinner says, I've been hesitating about embroidery for a while, but your videos finally made me confident enough to get my own machine. It just came in the mail today. Well, what machine did you get, my dear, so that we can ring the bell for you? Congratulations on your machine. And we are happy to have you here with us. I haven't seen your name before, so welcome to our channel. So let me see while you have that i'm going to pull this up and get us started i'm going to go with this one i think and it's easier it's an easier letter to do all right oops I'm trying to go through this as quickly as possible and I'm going to take this off and we'll save this all right now let's see if we can't switch this over what's the name of the rhinestone software that i purchased it is the i don't even know the name of it i'm not gonna lie to you but it's by the rhinestone world so whatever the name of their rhinestone software is that is the uh program that i pick i think it's wizard something wizard i can't think of the miss bickham knows the name of it i i don't know the name of it right off the top of my head unfortunately and i apologize for that because i should know all right so courtney skinner says the brother se 600 well congratulations on your brother se 600 <laughs> Woo! your new baby congratulations and to those who i have rang the bell for we generally name our babies around here so name your baby and that way you can show some special love to your babies when you can be like come blessing come on girl let's do some work today that's pretty much how it goes around here let me check the time right now we're at 8 43 it took a while for us to go through the chat and i apologize on that now the first thing i want to show you before we get into it i've sent the design to the machine uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start with our four by four hoop and it is hooped with tearaway stabilizer all right i have my 90 14 needle in the embroidery machine i also downloaded a special font from off of etsy that link is in the description below and what that special font is it is actually the greek letters that would go on a letterman's jacket and it's the both layers it's the top layer and the bottom layer that you can stitch out together to achieve this look all right so i didn't create this um, on my own, I went out, I found the font. It's perfect, all right? So we're gonna go with what works. So I've already uploaded that font to the machine, the one letter that we'll be doing today. 
The other thing is because we don't have uh, the Chanel fabric to use for this particular project because generally when they use Chanel to create that patch, it's made on the patch at that time. So there is a, really isn't like some Chanel fabric that you can use to make that patch that I am aware of. Everything that I've seen, they actually make that patch on the spot. So we're going to use some imitation type fabric that's going to give that look but without the nap, which is what those loops are called on the front of that patch. So this is a more affordable option for your clients. This is called uh, Twilly is what the name of it is on Ganold's website. So it's Ganold.com and this fabric does not stretch at all. There's no stretch to it. Okay, so technically you could use just about any fairly stiff fabric with this project. But what I found is a uh, regular duck twill that I've purchased from Joann's, it still has a stretch to it. It really does. So I don't recommend that for this project, but to test it out, see how it works before purchasing this, you can do so. Now, when I purchased this, if I'm remembering correctly, it's $16.95, so like $17 a yard of this fabric, okay? And this is... You can see uh, front and back and the weave on this. I don't know how close I can get in on that for you to see how that is. But the weave is so super tight on this. You're not going to get any stretch out of this fabric. Excellent for patch making. Okay. And I have red and white because that's the colors of what's on that jacket. And that's what I bought. And if you want to know how it comes in the mail... I'm going to show you really quick. I taped the box back shut because um, I wanted to make sure that nothing gets in this box when it's not in use. And this isn't a fabric that I'm going to be using like every day. So I taped the box back up. But look at how much you get. Okay, so this is a yard rolled up. But this is not a, a yard. I don't even know how long this is, y'all. I really need to measure it because I was like, oh my God, this is huge. This is a big roll and it's a yard rolled up. All right. So $17 for all of this fabric. Let's see if I can't drop my measuring tape. Let's see if we can't get a good measurement of how long this is. The twilly that you get from Ganold. So you're looking at... This is 30, 31 and a half uh, wide by one yard long, okay, for $17. And you see how thin of a strip I've cut off of this, and I've only used, what's that, 20, so roughly 11 inches to make three letters so far. This stuff is going to last me for a long time, all right? So... This is excellent fabric, very much worth the investment if you do decide to make patches out of this, okay? So that's one other thing I wanted to mention. Also, to put on the back of the patches to make it adhesive for those who choose not to sew it on, they want to press it on, we're going to use heat and bond on the back of the patch, all right? So this is the materials. These are the materials, rather, that I have on hand for this project today it's not going to take us very long as a matter of fact the longest part of this project is going to be cutting out the applique all right cutting the applique out so before we switch over also i want to let you know that you can do prep work for this project ahead of time especially if you have the software that can do it so what pro does have the ability to do this and it's called creating a cut file from an embroidery file. So there's a picture of a little pin on uh, the toolbar in Sew It Pro. You can click that and it shows you how to make an applique file. You select the part of the design that you want an outline made from and you save it as an SVG and you can upload it into Cricut and make a cut file so that you can cut out the actual letter the fabric before you put it on the machine which saves you some embroidery cutting out some applique cutting out rather because your letters are cut out ahead of time 
I'm not doing that tonight because that's drama. Didn't feel like going through all of that. So let's see if we can't switch over. And I'm also going to really quickly change the microphone as well so that hopefully over there you can hear me better instead of using the regular microphone so it may change the sound a little bit i apologize ahead of time all right so let me check and see really quick the software is called stone wizard from rhinestone world thank you very much sheila cuppy i appreciate that uh stone wizard i did not know <laughs> Um, Mary Binkley says, I love my brother PE500. It is an awesome machine. Today we will be sewing with the SE425. Um, Mary Binkley says she bought it from a friend and love it. It's a few years old and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that as long as it works. Patrick Quinlan, it's all right working on your quilt. You have fun with that because I can't quilt to save my life. <laughs> Betty says, I can't remember which digital went along with Sew It Pro. Digitizer would be Sew Art is the one that goes with Sew It Pro. Uh, Dr. Thread says, your SC600 is named Sassy. <laughs> Will has a kitty cat named Sassy, so that works for our family. Mary Binkley says, just got done doing the parents that came with the machine. Had a problem though. Uh-oh. With, um, why would the thread turn into a bird's nest where the needle goes through? I got it all out, but don't know what caused it. Can you explain what caused it? Um, the decibels are really high. Okay. Let me see. How do I turn that? Whoops. I muted it, didn't I? Is that better? No, no. Is that better, Will? Let me know. Bye, Karen Caldwell. You have a good evening. Thank you for joining us this evening the sound was better i know the sound was better before um i switched microphones because i'm going to be moving over there and it will sound like i'm clear across the room if i left the microphone to the one that i was on before will does that sound a lot better let me turn it down just a smidge you can't hear me okay how about now what does the sound sound like now is that better because i'm showing that i'm getting some output but I want to make sure that it's comfortable for everyone. That says, okay, that's good. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, sweet. Thank you, guys. I definitely, definitely appreciate it. All right, so let's go over. And Ebony Holmes, you're welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening for this whole project. Now, I hope I have everything I'm bad about um, for getting stuff. And I know the camera... Let's move you down. I know the camera is a bit far away, but what we're going to do is I'm going to, um, after getting caught up in the dang tripod, what I'm, <laughs> sorry, that was terrible to say. What I'm going to do is bring it up so that you can see it in the camera. All right. And it's going to be a little bit difficult for me to see the chat too. So I'll be you know, leaning over to make sure that I catch any questions that you may have, right? So let me back out of this because I was working on something else and I knew that pattern wasn't going to transfer over because that's just how things go around here. So let me switch this, make sure of the size. Yep, the size is good. So we're going to switch this to a 4 by. I'm working in So What Pro right now to make sure that we have the right size hoop and save it correctly. And being that I'm blind as a bat, I'm trying to do this from across the way. Yay, go me. What is this? All right, let's see if that works. Um, all right. Let me delete that. Sorry for the delay. I want to make sure that we get the right file over here. And I tried doing this ahead of time and it wants to act monkey. So let's see if that works. Yay, it works. All right. 
So here is our pattern that we're going to do today. And it is the first um, embroidery patch that was on that jacket, the upside down L. Don't ask me what the Greek name of that is. I have no clue. <laughs> I was not a Greek pledger of any sort. So I am somewhat lost when it comes with that. Um, Matey says purchase so what pro now need to figure out how to use it. I have several videos on the uh, use and how to start. Matter of fact, I do have a video on getting started with so what pro. So definitely look that up. Debbie says I love your shirt. Do you have the hoop design? Um, I don't have it for embroidery except for on the hand sanitizer just yet. Um, I don't offer it for sale as just the design for vinyl either. I do sell the shirt that's available on my website. I'll consider making the design available for purchase, but at this time I don't have it available for purchase. So I um, apologize for that. You said that's Gamma. Thank you, Will. <laughs> it's Gamma. We're going to do Gamma. <laughs> We're going to do Gamma right now. All right, so I have my tearaway stabilizer. So what we're going to do is put this on the hoop. So as I mentioned, I purchased this design from um, Etsy and I did put the link in the description below. Okay, so the first thing that this is going to want to do when you upload the design is it's going to do your outside, the background part of the letter. Then you're going to stitch the front part of your letter after the background is complete. So our first color stop is six color stops to this design, this design. And the first step is the placement stitch. Okay, so this is going to put the outline on our fabric to show us where on our stabilizer, rather, to show us where to put the fabric for the first part of the applique. All right, so this whole process basically is applique. So what I did on that jacket is pretty much you can pretend that this stabilizer is the jacket. You can do this exact same thing directly on the garment if you wanted to, okay? You just hoop the garment instead of hooping stabilizer. The only difference is we're not gonna put heat and bond on the back. If you stitch it directly on the garment, you don't have to, all right? So this is the tearaway stabilizer. Let's go ahead. I'm gonna use black thread to make it easier for you to see. And we're gonna go ahead and stitch out the placement stitches for the gamma fabric all right the background and i'm being bad putting my fingers in the way i know i apologize for those whom i teach do as i say not as i do <laughs> so as you see it's reinforcing that background stitch of your placement stitch. All right. And so now what we're going to do is lay the fabric on the hoop. And let me cut this stitch because for whatever reason, my thread cutter isn't wanting to cooperate. All right, so this is your placement stitch, okay? So this is the gamma symbol. And what we're in the process of doing right now is getting the background applique started. So the process of applique is your design will give you the placement lines so that you can make sure you take your fabric and cover those placement lines, all right? That's how you start with applique. To be 100% sure that your lines are all covered, you can look from the back. Usually through your uh, tearaway stabilizer, you can see through it enough to know that all of the stitches are covered. So if it was off a little bit, just like that, you can see that it's not completely covered. And of course, you can tell on the front too in this instance. But on the back, you can see it's not completely covered. So we want to make sure that's good and covered. All right. And so now that we know that, you would normally either spray it with, with spray adhesive. I don't like to use too much spray adhesive because it can eventually gum up your machine. 
Um, but if I needed to use it, I would or tape it down or pin the fabric down. And if you pin the fabric down, you have to make sure that the pins are out of the way of the needle. And that's kind of difficult to do on these smaller machines. So that's why generally I just hold it in place me personally and hope that it stays where it needs to or use tape, okay? But I'm not gonna use any of that right now. And again, I'm going to use um, black thread only to make it where you can see it really well, okay? So we're going to uh, go ahead and now this is the tack down stitch that we're doing now only because it's tacking the fabric in place. So it's the tack down stitch. So again, I'm using black thread, but if I were doing this on the jacket or actually making a legitimate patch that I will sell to a customer, I would be using white thread so that it would match the fabric and be less visible. And I'm gonna check real quick, make sure there aren't any questions. Uh-oh, I'm sorry, Glenn. Hashtag who group. Yes, thank you. I'm sorry you didn't get that notification. Sometimes YouTube lets us down with that. And we'll thank you for checking that link for me because I, I tried to make sure it was the right one. Um, all right. So again, I have to cut my uh stitch because the thread cutter isn't working. And here is the tack down stitch. Okay, so this is the first layer of applique. So the first layer now is tacked down where we need it to be. So this stitch is what you need to cut against, all right? So with applique, you have to cut the fabric around these lines. Now, as I mentioned, this is the longest, hardest part of doing applique, all right? And the most tedious part of the whole project, really. And that's where these awesome duckbill applique curved scissors come in, right? They help get good and close up under the fabric as we're cutting it okay so what you can do as well after the video is over you can check in my amazon store and the link to these scissors are in the amazon store as well all right so we're cutting out along this line and i'm going to show you after i get to a certain point how this process is going so you see it's not like super 100% close all the way around, but it's just as close as we can definitely get without cutting our threads, all right? So this is the applique process. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut this excess off and set it off to the side because I'm not gonna be using the white anymore after this. Not with this particular project anyway. All right, so again, I'm cutting up against this line close as I possibly can without cutting through my threads. All right. And even if you do cut through your thread a little bit, usually it's not that big of a deal because of our next step. But you want to try and avoid that as much as possible, which for whatever reason, because I'm, because I'm rushing, I'm cutting through my thread. So... I'm setting a poor applique example at this moment, but we'll show you how all of that comes together here in a moment, okay? So, here is our applique gamma, sorry, it's upside down, applique, <laughs> applique gamma letter, all right? So, this is the first, this is the first part, the first layer of applique, and it's in the background of this design, all right? And unfortunately, again, because I want it to be seen, I'm gonna co continue to use the black thread throughout this whole process so that you can see how it looks, all right? But I've shown you, and I'll show you again how it really should look when I show you the jacket again, okay? So let's go ahead and put the foot down, and our next step is going to be the outline satin stitching. Now, the cool thing about um, doing it for letterman jackets or lettering sweaters or Greek sweaters, whatever the case may be, whatever this is going on, is it's not a super thick satin column like it usually is with most patches. 
This is actually more of like a zigzag stitch, which is why I prefer to do it on the fabric itself instead of making like a patch, so to speak. But you'll see all that here in a moment. We're going to go ahead and do that outline zigzag stitch to tack the whole letter down and give it that uh, letterman type look. Okay, so let's go ahead and get that going. And while that stitches, I'm going to check the comments really quick and see what we have going on. Oh, Mary, I apologize. Unfortunately, when it comes to bird nesting, usually it's just one of many different problems. So one of the first things I suggest a person does with bird nesting is don't take your project out of the hoop. Just take the hoop off. Take the bobbin out of the machine and check and make sure it's not a bunch of lint or dirt or dust down up under that. Okay, then re-thread your bobbin. Try it again. If you're still getting bird nesting, then your next solution, change your needle. All right, see if the needle is the issue. Now, if you're a new embroiderer and you haven't done a project without any bird nesting, try re-threading your machine. And here in a moment, if you have, I think you said that you had the machine similar to this, I'll show you how to thread your machine because it has to be threaded correctly in order for it to stitch properly. And one of the biggest problems I'll show you right now is what a lot of people do, okay? Now that this, done, this is done, I can show you. Um, but give me a moment. Let's go back to the project that we're working on at hand. And as you see, this is how your Letterman letter stitches out, okay? And I'm going to trim up these gross-looking extra stitches and see how super cute that is, right? So this is the background part of this particular um, letter, okay? So this is the gamma letter. Now, really quick, Miss Mary, when you thread your machine, when you threaded it to begin with, your foot can't be down. You have to make sure that's up, all right? That's first and foremost. That's a common mistake that a lot of people make. You cannot thread this machine with the foot down. It has to be up. Then you want to put your thread on. It has to go through this silver holder. It has to go under this lip has to go down this channel around back up it has to catch that um up and down lever bar i don't know the proper names for it at this time i apologize but go around that bar back down it has to go there's a uh little lip back here over the top of the needle it has to go behind that then down and you thread your needle from the front to the back okay so that's how you thread your machine so Make sure that it's threaded properly and that you have no resistance on this thread coming through your machine. So you should be able to take um, the thread coming out of this machine and pull it just like this without any hesitation whatsoever. That's how you make sure that your machine is threaded properly, okay? So if there's something going on, something's bound up, then nine times out of 10, either it's not threaded properly, your bobbins area is not cleaned out properly, or um, your stabilizer may not be tight enough either, or there's a problem with the needle. So try those things first. Unfortunately, when it comes to diagnosing a problem with the machine, it's not as easy as saying, oh, this is what the problem is, or that's what the problem is. So whenever you ask for assistance in trying to figure out what's wrong with it, make sure you go through those steps first. Then after you go through those steps and you're still having an issue, a lot of times you may have to have it looked at or serviced because it could be your tension could be off or um, it's any number of things could be wrong. If the machine was used, it could have an issue down here in the bobbin and you may need a new bobbin case. There's all kinds of problems that could come out of uh, a machine. So that's a difficult question to answer, but those are some common solutions that might help solve the problem, all right? So back to doing our patch applique. So now that we have this awesome zigzag outline going on, our snazzy looking background to our letter, now we're going to add the second applique layer on top of this one. And it's gonna work the exact same way. We're gonna get a placement stitch. We're gonna get a tack down stitch. After we get our tack down stitch, we're gonna trim 
after we trim is our last step and we're going to get that final awesome zigzag stitch to finish off our embroidery part to our patch okay so let's go ahead and put our placement stitch down for our gamma symbol okay and again as i mentioned this particular font comes with the outer and the inner layer attached together by size all right so this is the three inch size if i'm not mistaken and when you pick gamma it comes with both of those in the same pattern all right so you can choose to eliminate a layer if you need to but the effect of the double layer is what makes this look so great so here we have our tack down stitch for our next layer of applique so what we want to do is put our next piece and as you see i did the other letter here we're going to lay that right on top now make sure it's not this back side with the um interesting texture you want to go with that smoother texture on front that was mainly i was mainly showing you that for the white fabric because it's difficult to get it's not that difficult to get it mixed up and we're going to make sure that this is covered and we're going to put this right back on the machine now this is the exact same process again that you would do if this was on the jacket except instead of having tearaway hooped you would have the jacket hooped okay so now this is our tack down stitch And it's going over it twice to make sure that it's good and secured so that if we did cut through a couple of stitches, it won't ruin the whole thing. All right, so now we have our tack down stitch in place. So I'm going to trim this off and we're going to cut off and cut out this red fabric. All right, so this is our second layer of applique and again your applique scissors come in quite handy to make sure that you don't cut that fabric that's underneath so i'm going to go back through the exact same process i just went through and yes you have to do this with with each let me rephrase that yes i had to do this with each one of those three letters on the jacket that I've already done and I'm gonna have to do it again on the second jacket okay so cutting this out and I'm gonna show you my imperfect cutting out job <laughs> trying to get as close as I possibly can without cutting any of the stitches the zigzag stitches from the first letter or without cutting through my uh, stitches for this letter Right. I know you probably can't see me cutting, so I'm going to hold this up here in a moment to show you how it's coming along. It's not tragic, but again, these scissors are very helpful. I hated doing applique until I got these scissors. All right. So if you're going to try applique, you really want to invest in these scissors. All right because when I tell you it made a huge difference, it really did. And it is very sharp, as you will see, as it will show you, I've cut through some of my tack down stitches, which, you know, this is just my test, so it's not gonna hurt anything. But here is our second layer, all right, of our letter, okay? It's not cut out perfectly, but I'm kind of rushing through it so I don't hold out all night. And we're going to go ahead now and do our final color stop, which is the zigzag. And that's going to finish the embroidery for this project. So we just did applique and we're about to finish the applique and do a patch. Easy. How easy was this?
All right, and I'm going to check the chat real quick and see where we are. Dorothy Gaston says, hi, E. Glad to finally get a chance to join you. Been missing you. Well, we've missed Dor Dorothy Brown. Sorry, we've been missing you as well. Thank you for joining us this evening. <laughs> Mary says, I have done about eight pieces this week, but had to, but had a problem. I'm sorry, had no problem until the parents. Okay, so there could be maybe what you're putting it on. The parents might be too dense for that fabric. I'm not sure. And it also depends on how bad the bird nesting is. Um, Tracy says, hi, Eve. I finally caught you live. Love your videos. Thank you. I'm glad you caught us live, too. We're actually doing a project this time <laughs> instead of just talking. Um, would, would it be maybe I need to put a new needle? Definitely try a new needle. That's first thing, one of the first things I would do. Um, uh, Sheila Chan says, Mary, from my past experience, it could be a dull needle tension problems or bobbin problems. Um, and Grandma Souls Brown. <laughs> Hi, Grandma Souls Brown. How are you? I did a very dumb thing. Nothing's dumb. We all make mistakes. And had bird nesting. I had been doing thread sketching without a presser foot and had not embroidered for a long time. I set up with no presser foot. Doesn't work. Yeah, sometimes that won't work. That was not though. Sometimes, a lot of times that doesn't work. <laughs> so let us show you our finished letter. Woo! Yay! Now, I'm going to tell you it doesn't look its best right now because I was rushing through it and I didn't trim super close in a couple of areas, but... This is our applique gamma letter for a letterman jacket. So had I trimmed like I was supposed to, then that extra red, extra fluff wouldn't be there. And what you actually can do at this point, if you can't, you know, just pull those threads away, you can go back with this type of scissor, these little nip type scissors with the curved edge and you can go back in and trim that thread sometimes and it'll look better. But one thing's for certain, if I had of used red thread or the white thread, that would have helped hide that some. It wouldn't have been as obvious, okay? So definitely use the exact same color thread that's on the fabric that you're tacking down. And this is our letter. So we can take this out. The embroidery is done. We don't have any more embroidery to do. And this is tearaway fabric. So let's tear our letter out just this easy look at this ah yay it worked <laughs> it worked y'all it worked and see mary there's a little bit of bird nesting behind here as well okay so at this point this could be applied to a sweater it could be applied to a jacket one of two ways either you can put this on the sewing machine on the item and then just run a stitch right along that uh, zigzag outside line and that will tack this down or you can put heat and bond behind it okay so this is heat and bond there's a rough side which is glue and then there's this paper side so what you would do is cut this out based on the size of the letter and in a sec I'm gonna show you another trick that I love to do with my patches and it's very helpful, but it'll be after I show you the heat and bond. So you can cut this out just like so. And with this rough side up, just lay your patch on top of it. Make sure that you follow the manufacturer's directions about the heat temperature and press put wax paper first and foremost over the top of this, wax or parchment paper lay over the top of this because otherwise this glue will stick to your iron the bottom of your iron and you don't want that trust me and so you put your wax paper over the top of this then press it according to your main the manufacturer's directions and then you cut it out because this will be stuck to the paper we'll cut it out and then you either leave the paper on the back or you can peel the paper off 
and it'll leave the glue on the background and you can give it to the customer just like that or if it's your project then you put it to the garment and press it to the garment according to the directions and this will glue in place all right so if i have a patch near me which i do that i can show you how that looks i'll show you how that looks all right so let me move the camera back over to the computer because we're done here this part is finished and then we can switch back to the better microphone and i can show you my other trick that i like to use when doing patches and I can show you what it looks like once a patch has the heat and bond on the back, all right? So let me get this switched over. Move my tripod out the way because I keep kicking it. And we're gonna put you back up here. Hello, everyone. All right, yas, that wasn't so bad. <laughs> All right, now let me grab a patch and show you. This is a patch that I made, put bling on the front, but this is a patch without the heat and bond here, and this is a patch with the heat and bond. And notice it still has the paper on here. It has the paper on here because I was going to give this to my customer and have the customer apply it themselves, okay? So they would need to peel the paper off when they were ready to apply it. And you see how shiny that is on the back of that? You can barely see it because it's clear glue, all right? But they will peel this all the way off, apply it to their garment, and press it on. Easy peasy mac and cheesy and that's how you do your patches with heat and bond now back to this particular patch our gamma symbol i'm holding it upside down there's a lot of stray stitches and whatnot back here what i generally do is hit it with a lighter and clean that mess up and generally this happens really quickly it cleans it up make it nice and neat and in a lot of instances it sort of seals it so to speak i don't know how to explain it but it makes cleanup work on the back of that a whole lot easier instead of trying to sit there and snip all of those blame threads and we're done that's it this is over and done with all right so at this point you put the heat and bond how was that did that seem hard did that really seem hard it was not difficult at all was it so as i mentioned before those exact same processes minus the heat and bond is what you would do to apply it to the jacket or the sweater or the shirt that you want to put that on and make uh, the patch look without the chenille on the item and that's it and again here's the jacket that i did already and it has these and they were applied directly to the garment all right and as soon as this part was done the embroidery part on so what pro i took this letter and added the words to the merge the word onto this actual letter right and so that once the entire patch was finished just like this one was then it stitched out rhythm thigh and soul on the top of it and now we have a custom jacket where for those who may not be able to afford the Chanel, they have a letterman's jacket, all right? So this jacket actually turned out really cute. I had a lot of fun making it. Not only did they want the uh, patch look on the front, they also wanted bling on the back and a uh, nickname for the back of the jacket as well. So as I mentioned, it's a step team meaning that they, you know, do the stomp and clap in rhythm type thing for those not familiar with the step team. And this is a jacket. The only thing I have left to do, sorry, wrong side, is put a name, the name of the coach on this jacket. And I have to finish this other jacket. So won't be doing that tonight, but <laughs> that's what's next. So let's go to the chat real quick. And then I'll finish out with you guys. Um... Let's see. Let's see. Mary says, thank you all very much. You're welcome. These ideas, thanks. God bless us from Florida. We're welcome from Florida. I don't think we got to say that earlier. 
And yes, it can be very frustrating when the embroidery machine is acting up. I totally get that. And I don't like to brush people off, but I will let you know that it is very difficult to help someone diagnose their machine, you know, without actually being there and seeing what's going on. But give those first few things a try. Make sure that your bobbin area is cleaned out. Make sure that your bobbin is threaded correctly or inserted correctly because it's supposed to have like the water over effect when you put it down in the embroidery machine. So check your manual to make sure that you're loading the bobbin correctly. Also, uh, make sure that it's threaded correctly when you're threading it. Make sure your presser foot is up. Make sure there's no resistance anywhere in that pathway and put in a fresh needle if none of those things work but you said that it was doing embroidery really well before so it could just be a rogue thread that's um caught up in that bobbin area that's causing it to um catch up now if you broke a needle prior to stitching out the birds it could be that the needle went through the bobbin case and caused a burr and that's something really small really simple and just replacing the bobbin case will fix that problem. That's a huge problem that I had. Um, I broke a needle, didn't realize that the needle went through the bobbin case, and I had a fit afterwards in trying to embroider anything. And the guy came out, he saw that's what it was, and he sanded that down and fixed it. But I like to keep extra bobbin cases here so that I can just change them out if it seems that that is the problem. All right, so that is definitely... Uh, a pain. Ethel Warren says, I'm left-handed. Do they make those scissors for left-handed people? Um, Patrick says, I'm left-handed and his are universal. So I'm not sure if they make them for left-handed, um, but I would venture to say that they do. Um, but he says that they're universal. I know for me, I turn them all kind of which way sometimes I use them upside down. Not very smart probably, but I do. Um, but definitely go out and check. I'll check for you. I'm going to see if they do have left-handed options. Um, and if so, we'll definitely add those to the uh, Amazon store. Um, what time does this program start? I start 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, as Patrick pointed out. Thank you so very much, Leah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Just So Boutique by Nina. Hello, all. I made several jackets with Greek letters for your daughter's sorority. Did you use the same process? Did you use the uh, Twilly fabric or did you have the ability to get in touch or get access to some Chanel and make your letters? That will be cool to know. Jackie Howard says, good night. Good night to you too, dear. Thank you for joining us. Erica Bet says, oh my God, that was so easy. Love it. Thank you. You're welcome. It was really easy. It really was. I was shocked at how easy it was. When I did it the first time, I was like, okay, this can't be this easy. It was. I was very pleased with the outcome. And the uh, owner of that jacket was extremely pleased with the outcome. And they've since ordered more jackets. So I'm very excited about that. I'm going to be working for a while. <laughs> Patrick says, we use the lighter trick for our loose threads on our uniforms in the Air Force. Yas. Sharon Rogers, where did you get the jackets? I did not. Those are customer supplied jackets. So I'm not sure where they got those jackets from. Um, but the name of the jackets are Kate Kaysen. Don't know. Kate Kaysen. Don't know who that is. But KateKaysen.com, K-A-T-E-K-A-S-I-N.com. So I would assume you would be able to purchase this jacket from that website. I have no idea how much that jacket is. I probably should have looked that up before I started on this, on this project. Because if it's like an 80 buck jacket, I would have been sad had I messed up. <laughs> um... Shamina Stewart don't own any machines yet. What machine do you recommend for beginners or new machine owners with no experience? Honestly, um, first and foremost, what is your budget? Not asking for you to respond that in the chat at all. Um, but I'm asking you to mentally take note of what your budget is and write it down. So if you have a thousand dollars to spend on the machine, that's what you need to put in your mind. If you only have four hundred dollars 
to spend on a machine. That's what you need to put in your mind, okay? So if you have four to five hundred dollars or less to put on an embroidery machine, you can go on my Amazon page. Any one of the brother four by four machines is a great start. It only goes to four by four unless you purchase the repositional hoop, which give you four by six and six and a half roughly. Um, you don't get very much space out of that machine, but there's a ton that you can do with that little embroidery machine. Don't let the size fool you. Yes, you'll get kind of bored a little bit somewhat um, by doing the 4x4 four four only because you are kind of limited, but there's a lot you can do, and I don't understand why people dog it so bad, um, but that's one option. If you have up to a 1000 that you can spend, then you have a couple of options. You can go with the Brother 5x7 machine, which a lot of people love the versatility of that machine. 5x7 affords you a lot of projects that you can do um, at, with that larger size hoop. So that's an excellent hoop that you can get. And there's a repositional hoop that comes with the 5x7 that gets you 5x, I want to say 10 or 11, something to that effect with that particular machine if you got the repositional hoop with that one. So that's one, and I want to say the 5x7 Brother Machine runs neighborhood 600 to 800 depending upon where you purchase. And I do have an Amazon link in my Amazon store for that one as well, all right? Now, you also can go, if you have $1,000 and a little bit more, you can go to Joanne's Fabrics. Um, they have a Viking Husqvarna store inside of Joanne's Fabrics and a lot of their machines run about that price. Um, I haven't heard too many positive reviews, but a lot of people do have that type of mach brand of machine um, and they use it with no problem. So you may want to check there if you have that much because you can actually get a much bigger hoop than 5x7 out of that brand of machine. So those are some things that you can do and will thank you for letting me know them jackets at twenty dollars <laughs> i feel a lot better uh valerie you have a good night dear so that is the uh question about the beginner machines loyalty honesty hello to you as well valerie you're welcome i'm glad let me know when you do patches so that we can see them uh, Just So Boutique by Nina says you didn't do Chanel. You made it with a twill. Very good. I am glad to hear that. It is a lot of fun. And Patrick Quinlan, good night to you as well. Tracy, is the twill material affordable? Yes, it is, um, in my opinion, because you're getting uh, a yard of this fabric, which is this is the twill. I have two different pieces together. I have the red uh, rolled up with the white. But a yard of this, this is 31 inches up and down, and it's a yard rolled up, and this was $17 per color, all right? So 17 for the white, 17 for the red, but you're getting a ton of this, and the amount of patches that I'll be able to get out of this fabric is insane. It really is. Um, so up front, the cost is eh, eh, you know, but once you start doing those, those patches will not be inexpensive. For a customer okay because patches cost so you definitely can make your money back and then some off of you you could charge 15 10 15 dollars per patch if you wanted to all right you really can all right so Erica Betts suggested the brother SE 400 is great um, just so boutique by Nina can find those jackets on Amazon for around 30 that's good to know <laughs> Tracy, you're welcome. So you guys, thank you for joining us this evening with such a really awesome project. It's 930. We had a good time with you this evening, stitching out, as Will told me, the Gamma letter and making a patch out of it. How fun was that? Very simple, easy to do. We also want to thank those who uh, donated to the channel tonight, the Super Chats. We have Miss Carol Coleman, who is a regular donator, and we definitely appreciate her generosity we also had will donating to the channel and teresa spencer again donating to the channel and we've often had quite a few folks donating behind the scenes where you don't see and they send in paypal donations and those are also always appreciated we definitely love and appreciate the supporters to this channel and the regulars to this channel 
make this channel a lot of fun. So thank you for joining us this evening. If you're not a subscriber, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure that that notify bell is clicked right beside subscribe so that you don't miss your notifications. If YouTube X, right? <laughs> You get your notifications anytime we go live or anytime we upload new content. We always appreciate those who come back and watch our videos and enjoy the time that they spend here with us. I had a great evening with you all this evening. Congratulations again to those who got new babies recently. Please be sure to join the Hoop Group as pointed out down here below at thebabiesbooty.com and join Hoop Group and post your pictures. Say hello. Please interact in that channel. Don't be shy. Let us know you're there. We love having our Hoop Group family here with us. Hashtag Hoop Group over here in the chat. If you had a good time tonight, hashtag Hoop Group to you all. And please let me know if you have any suggestions for any videos, whether it be on our live or whether it be just an instructional video that you would like to see in the future. So thank you again for joining us this evening. Be sure to catch Will from Carolina Thread Place live on Friday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. He also does instructional videos and something tells me, let me see. I want to think that Will might be doing some heat press videos, sure. I don't know what's making me think that. Mm -hmm. Something is making me think he's going to do some heat press videos, too, really soon. <laughs> so, Hot Head is going to be busy on YouTube soon. I'm sure of it. So, please support Will on Friday nights if you don't already and watch him and his Hot Head heat press and his new ventures that he's going to be having on his channel as well. So again, by the end of this evening, we want to make sure that all of you have a happy and bordering experience in your studio. So you guys have a great night and we'll see you next week, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> Bye. Have a good night.